Hello everyone and welcome to another Science Tutor video on the topic of graphing. So if you've watched our previous video, you would have seen some of the essentials that your graph is expected to have. We know that a graph is a method used to visually represent collected data, right? and that visual representation usually makes a graph easier to interpret than just raw data itself. Right? It presents how the data that, or how one quantity plotted on your y-axis changes as the quantity plotted on your x-axis changes. All right? Every graph is expected to have a clear title. It's expected to have a clear scale. And it's expected to have clearly labeled axes and points. All right? So a clear title, scale, we spoke about clearly labeled axes, and we spoke about points. Points are plotted using either a dot in a circle or a cross. Not too large, not too small. All right? Once you've plotted your points, you are expected to indicate, using an appropriate line, how the points or how the data varies. So you're expected to have what's referred to as a best fit line. All right. This best, best fit line can either be straight or curved. Now, the great majority of the graphs that you plot will probably be straight line graphs. And if you plot your graph and you notice that the points look something like this, hopefully not as bad as badly scattered as these, but if the if the points look something like this, your graph is probably a straight line graph. And generally, it's usually generally it's easy to see from the scatter of the points. If your points looked something like this, then this now this looks more like a curve. Right? So you can clearly see that there's a curving trend for B set of data. But in the data set for A, the graph is actually closer to that for a straight line. So how are you expected to connect the dots or connect the points for this line? In actuality, you're not. The best fit line is what's referred to as an average. The best fit line is the average of all of your points. If this average is a straight line, right, if all of the data is showing you a linear trend, in other words, that y is directly proportional to x, or y is equal to some constant times x, then this indicates that your best fit line, the line that averages out all of your points, should be a straight line. Yeah? Now, because of individual variations, because of random error, all of these points might not be exactly on the straight line. So it's kind of it's somewhat rare for you to get points lining up perfectly like this. That would be beautiful, because then your straight line could pass right through all of the points. But that doesn't always happen. In some cases, you might end up with data that's scattered like this. Right? And the best line, the best fit line, is one which has equal numbers of points on either side of the line. Now, you have to be careful when you interpret that statement, because this line has four points on the left, four points on the right. They're equal numbers of points on either side of the line. But obvi obviously, this line is not the best representation of this data. Right? A better representation would be taken by drawing a line something like this. Right? The line passes as close as possible to all of your points. Right? And this line is what we refer to as your best fit line. Yeah. Best fit, because it is the best fit. It comes closest to all of your points. So for the first set of data, data set A, in drawing your best fit line, you would take a ruler or a straight edge and line it up in such a way that most, if not all, of your points come very close to the line. Some may be some distance away from it. But when you draw your line, it should come as close as possible 
to all of your points. Right? It doesn't have to pass through all of your points. Right? It actually may not pass through any of your points. But the overall trend should be that the spacing between points above the line and spacing beneath points below the line is approximately equal. If your data is curved, if it represents a curve like data set B, then you're expected to draw a smooth curve through all of your data, something like this. Again, the line may not pass through all of your points, it might not pass through any of them, but it should pass as close as possible to all of them, and it's preferred if the line passes through at least one or two points. All right, so you're expected to have a best fit line. Once you've plotted the line, you can actually get some useful information from your graph, especially if it's a straight line graph. One piece of information you can get from your graph is the gradient, or slope. The gradient, or slope, is simply a measure of how much y that's the quantity on your y-axis, changes with x. All right? So it's a measure of how much y changes with x. The gradient of a graph, or slope, is also a measure of how steep the graph is. Right? So if you have two graphs, graph A and graph B, Graph A is noticeably shallower than graph B. Graph B is physically steeper. Right? There's a much larger change in Y as opposed to X when you look at graph B as opposed to graph A. Graph B would then have a larger gradient. Right? There's a formula for the gradient of a graph, and that formula is that the gradient is equal to delta Y divided by delta x, where delta means change in. So it's the change in y divided by the change in x. Let's say you have two points, point 1 in coordinate notation with a value x1 and a value y1, and point 2 again in coordinate notation with a value x2 and y2. The gradient is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. On your typical straight line graph, y2 and x2, in other words, the data for your second point, refer to a point that is further along your x-axis. All right, so this would be y2, this would be x2, and for your first point, you'd have corresponding values y1 and x1. The gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and it's a measure of the rise of the graph over the run of the graph essentially how much y changes with x. All right. So thanks for watching this video. In our next video, we'll actually do some examples involving graphing. All right. Until then, stay tuned.